rejoice and to be glad in it. It's so good to see you this morning. This is also Men's Day. Let us receive our men of JBC this morning.
praise from the going down of the sun until it's coming up. The Lord is to be praised. That means that when you're feeling good, praise the Lord. When you're feeling bad, praise the Lord. So always keep the posture of praising the Lord. I'm just so excited to be here this morning. What a blessed day it is for it is the Lord's day. And it's men's day also. Jacob's day has set aside this day to recognize the men. And we have a great program set up this morning. The men come in singing. We got the men, the brothers at the door. We got brothers on the program. The safe word. We got brothers behind the seat. Morning, Jerusalem. Happy Wednesday. Uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer, I just want to do a quick announcement and, and a prayer request. Uh, so, from an announcement standpoint, as you guys know, uh, my wife and I are typically or sparingly in church uh, September through November, as it is our daughter's uh, volleyball season. Uh, but praise the Lord, this is her senior year at Virginia State. We have not been a for two Lord, we ask that as we move forward in this Wednesday, it says in your word, Lord, 
Psalm 133 at the beginning, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell yes. together. Yeah. We ask that we continue to dwell together in unity and uplift your name. Lord, we give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. Yes. Lord, we ask that as the pastor continue to preach on this series of surrounded but, not a, but alone, that at the end we will feel surrounded and secure. Yeah. Lord, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In your name, Jesus. to walk 
and the spirit is circular. So what do I mean by that? That means that as men, we have to be pillars. We can't allow anything to move us, to shake us. We have to be strong for our communities, our families, because there's a mandate on each of our lives. And so when you think about what that mandate is, it's Christ likeness, it's service, it's leading by example. And when things get hard and when things face us, we're not the ones that, that tuck tail and run. We're the ones that stand up and say, no, not here, not in my life. And so, when you think about the types of situations and scenarios that's touching hand over right now, there's a lot that's going on. And so at some point, we all have to stand up as a community and say, no, not on my watch. And so I'm willing to be the mouthpiece. Just like I know a lot of men in here are willing to be the mouthpiece. To say no. Right? It's time to get back to community again. You know, it's time to say no to the stuff that's sent from the pit of hell to think about. Right? And so I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share just a little bit. I was put on a time limit by my friend back there. So. But, I, you know, I'll be here for the whole service, and I'd love to be able to meet you all, shake your hand, hug your neck a little bit. And uh, thanks for having me this morning. Amen. Because, because I am a right in, um, you know, when you do vote, hopefully you all will exercise your right to vote. Um, I'm a right in candidate, so you have to write my name. George Monroe, so that way it's consistent across the board. Um, because they won't count it if you don't. Right? So that's just another thing that we have, we have to persevere and push through. All right? So thank you all this morning.
of veterans living or deceased. A sheet will be in the lobby with your name and spouse's name. Please put your check mark that indicates you saw it. If your name is missing, please fill in the line. We need to have all the names checked by Sunday, October 22nd. Thank you for your attention on this matter. If you have any questions, please see Deaconess Maxson here. The trustees meeting, I mean, excuse me, the trustees ministry will have a meeting today after the morning worship service. Baptism schedule is scheduled for the third Sunday, October 15th. Also, please continue to pray for our sick and shut in. It only takes a minute. If people are out there, they're not feeling so well, so make sure you think of them, make sure that they are feeling loved. Pray for them. Also, after my announcements, we will go back to meet and greet. So, after I'm done speaking, you all may go shake hands, go make a new friend, say hello. If you haven't seen someone all week long, just, you know, say hi, say hello. So we'll take that for two minutes. Now, this, uh, this concludes, oh, sorry, one more announcement. Gentlemen, we will be going on a fishing trip on October 7th at Ocean View Pier. It costs $11 per person for people over the age of 64. The cost is uh, $8. And for children under 24 inches tall, it is free of charge. If you'd like to sponsor a child, please, uh, excuse me, if you'd like to sponsor a child to fish, please see Deacon Thompson and Trustee Brooks, or the winner of last year's fishing contest, this is these are announcements. Right before y'all do meet and greet, hang on just a second. Um, I wanted to announce for divine assist. I spoke on it a little bit yesterday, but we are beginning a meeting program in, at, at Divine Assist in Action. And we wanted to announce it to Jerusalem first before we gave everybody else an opportunity to come. Amen. And so if you know of adults who are doing the Wilson Reading Program, it's very systematic, it's very structured, it's very intensive. But we realize there are folk who want to read, who can't read, and who are struggling. And so as one of the ministry outreaches, we are offering this opportunity. Um, if you know of anyone that wants to participate, there will be an information session this Tuesday at 7 p.m. at Divine Assist. Um, and, and it comes out of, I, know, I can say this, out of Wanda's heart, that she's always wanted to help out people who need help. And, and so um, we're going to be offering this. So um, please, be, if you need more information, connect, connect with anyone who is in with Divine or anyone you can connect with me or um, Sister Palmer or, or anyone. Okay? And I just want to let you know. God bless you. Now we're going to have a meeting group. We're going to stand up. Say good morning to somebody you don't remember. Say good morning to somebody you don't remember. What's up, man? How you doing?
woke us up this morning. You couldn't have woke yourself up this morning, even if you want to. Let's come on. Bless the name of the Lord. I just want to thank everybody that participated in the program. Thank God for the men today. And, um, I'm going to take my seat. Before I turn it over to the pastor, though, I just want to thank JBC for giving me this opportunity to serve this morning. I want to thank Brother Dietrich for asking me to serve. I don't take it lightly. It's always an honor when you can come and stand behind and say, Amen. Yes. So I'm going to, uh, after the next election by our choir, I'll turn it over to our pastor. Come on, bless that pastor.
That's all right. So if you would, one more time, jump up on your feet. Jump up on your feet. I, I want you to be able to get the whole story, uh, just in case you missed last week. And, and for whatever reason, didn't go check it out online. Because you can check it out online if you missed last week. Uh, uh, but I want you to hear the whole story. Come on. Uh, again, John, the fifth chapter. We're going to see what does say the Lord. After, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up there to Jerusalem. Now, now there's at Jerusalem about the sheep market of pool, which is called the Hebrew tongue of Bethesda, had the south porches. And these lay great walks to the impotent folks, blind, halt, withered, and waiting for the water to move. For an angel of the Lord came down in a certain season into the pool to trouble the water. Whosoever then first, first out of the trouble of the water stepped in was made whole. Of what sort of disease he had. And a certain man was there. He had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. And he asked him a question. A question, he said unto him Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be well? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I don't have nobody. I ain't asking. He said, do you want to be well? Every time the water's trouble, I can't seem to get down there first. I didn't ask you that. Do you want to be well? He said, while well, I'm on my way, he can put us another person steps in the field. Jesus said, that's enough of that. My question is, do you want to be well? By the grace of God and the mercy of God on today, I want to minister to you all from a subject title. It's her fault that I find myself in this particular position. Uh, 
And so on the onset of this arduous journey that we call humanity, we see right out of the gate the need for excuses. Oh, when I'm not where I'm supposed to be, when I'm not what I'm supposed to be, when I'm not how I'm supposed to be, when I'm not moving in the way God told me to move, it's much easier for me than to accept accountability and responsibility for playing my part and my role in it to blame everybody else and everything else and everyone else. Because it makes me feel better about me. It, 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 it makes me feel better about my mess. Yeah. I'm going to say it different because it ain't really you feeling better about you. It's you feeling better about your mess. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it, it was because of how I was raised. I'm where I am right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's because of the fact that I didn't have my parents around. It's because that's what it is. Because I grew up with nothing and I had to hustle and I had to grind. I got involved with stuff I shouldn't have been involved with. And I just found myself where I That's why. That's why. It's because I was trying to provide for me and my kids and I was a single parent. I was a single mom. I did whatever I had to do. So whatever I had to do, what I had to do. And that's why. And that's why. And that's why. And everybody got a reason. For why you are where you are. Do me a favor, just turn to your neighbor and tell them what's your excuse. And you don't have to answer it. But just pose the question, what's your excuse for not being what God told you you were supposed to be? What's your excuse for not doing what God told you that you were supposed to do? And what's your excuse for not worshiping in the way that God told you you were supposed to worship? And what's your excuse for not glorifying God in the way you were supposed to glorify Him? And God then told you to be more involved in the worship community. What's your excuse, God? Ben told you to be more involved and have a better prayer life. What's your excuse, God? Ben told you to spend more time reading my word. What's your excuse? God has been told you. What's uh, everybody got? Uh, first thing really quick I want to talk to you about is transforming your talk. Somebody say transform your talk. Transform your talk. Transforming your talk uh, is about coming out of the space where you're talking about everybody except the person in the mirror. Yeah, it, it ain't nobody in the mirror but you. But you're talking about everybody else. And, 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 and talking about everybody else, what you have done unintentionally is giving everybody else power over your life. It's Johnny's fault. So Johnny, I'm going to show you. Huh? It's Susie Fox, so Susie running the show in your life. At what point are you going to take power back over your life, your circumstances, and your situation? I gave you on this morning to holler, I got the power. Come on, somebody, say it like you mean it. I got the power that God has a plan for me in my life. And it don't matter what I've been through, and it don't matter what I experienced, I got the power. It don't matter what they say about me, and it don't matter how they talk about me, I got the power. And it don't matter what tears I had to cry, the things I had to endure.
Uh, and, and we prayed and I called and I called and we prayed and she went to sleep and she woke up and she said, God told me to tell them they can do what they need to do. And, and, and I watched, they wheeled her back into surgery. Sister Linda, and when they finished what they were doing, when they brought her back through so we could see her before she went to the recovery room and she had her hands raised in worship. The people were around us asking, oh, what's going on? What's that? They thought something amazing had just taken place. Oh, she just had her back in the What is she doing? Her friends are thanking God for life. I get to decide how I respond. You might not be able to decide everything that God wants, but you can respond to it in a way that gets the glory. With my hands lifted up, I hope you will help me, church. And my mouth filled with praise. A heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord, from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. No matter what I'm experiencing in the moment, God is still worthy. Somebody holler, He's still worthy. Where's my old church at?
necessary information from God. Like you don't know it already. God, I just want to let you know I went to the doctor and wasn't that good. God, I just want to let you know my light bill cost about 275 more than what I got. I just want to let you know that I gave my offering last week and I'm still short. Physically able, I can't get it by myself, and I, and I can't do it 
God, we bless you. God, we thank you. And God, we give you glory. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Come on, give God praise. Right now.
celebration. Hallelujah. We got a few more hands up. We got a few more hands up. Hallelujah. 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 God, we praise you. God, we praise you. Can I get somebody to grab a few from him so we can do more? Hallelujah. This, this, I don't want them too spread out. Yeah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. God, we give you glory. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Goodbye to my pain and my soul. So long, bye bye. Hallelujah. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Hallelujah. Goodbye to my pain and my soul. Hallelujah. So long. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Y'all good up here? Hallelujah. For I have received of the Lord, the Apostle Paul declared that which I give unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it. Father, we thank you for your body, which was wounded for our transgression, the boots for our iniquity, that the test that our peace was upon the Lord Israel's stripes. We are, in fact, healed. Our God, we give you praise and we give you glory for being broken so that we can be made whole. We honor you all today. We honor your sacrifice. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord declares that after the same manner, he took the cup and he gave thanks. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can be?
Well, since I forgot about you, I'm just going to skip right to it. 2023 Man of the Year Award, Charles Nelson. Y'all going to make some noise for him. Come on up here, bro. I didn't forget about you. I didn't forget about you. The main thing every year, we do it. Last year, I believe, was doing with Zion and Brother uh, Fairley back there. The year before was Brother Steve Jeter. Every year, we look out to see who amongst the congregation can go above and beyond the Christian experience to do what it needs to be done for the church to run. That means, you know, not a deacon, not a trustee, not a usher. I just say, I want to worship the Lord, but I want to use my gifts to do that as well. So this brother is the epitome of what a brother supposed to be in the church of the Lord. We just want to present this to you, brother. And then we read it. It says, 2023 Man of the Year Award, Jerusalem Baptist Church, of the Charles Nelson for going above and beyond the call of Christian duty, Hebrews 13 and 16, with signatures that's going to be on there from Pastor Elect, Brother Bootley, Johnson, Robert Johnson, excuse me, and myself. All right, but I just want to thank y'all and Pastor, do your thing. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all give it up one more time. Y'all give it up one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for coming out. We're gonna still we're gonna keep working this series surrounded but alone. Tell somebody about what God is doing here. Tell somebody more importantly what he's doing in your life. Let your light so shine so that others may see your good works and glorify God our Father, which is in heaven. Tell somebody about Jesus. Invite somebody to come worship with you. You might save their life. And I promise he'll make yours better at the same time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory for this worship. Tonight. We thank you for your presence here. We pray, God, as we depart from this place, but not from your presence, that you will continue to strengthen us and equip us to tell the excuses I'm now. So long. Bye-bye. Now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, and allow no evil to befall us, do that any plague come here, I will take. Thank you, great God, that you are forgiving your angels charge over us and keep us in all of our ways. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I we pray this God, our Father, through the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. 